Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Shall we begin with a word of prayer? Oh Lord, Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning thankful for life, thankful for the blessings. We pray that you'll be with us now as we continue to dig deep into this chapter. It's a, it's a long, uh, one of the long sermons that you gave, and we know that many people were there to listen to it, including your disciples. And we know that many people have listened to it uh, throughout the years. And we know it's done a great work. And so we ask that you, for the presence of the Holy Spirit, to lead, guide and teach us. This we ask in the worthy and precious name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Welcome everyone. Uh, shall we begin with hymn 76? I love that will not let me go. We'll take the first verse. Anyone for the second verse? 76. I'll try the second. Right, thank you. Anyone for the third? I'll take the third one, sisters. Thank you. And anyone for the last verse? Seventy-six. Okay, we'll finish it off. Oh, love, that will not let me go, I rest my weary soul in thee, I give thee back the life I owe, that in thine ocean depths it flows. May fuller, fuller be. O light that follows all my way, I yield my flickering torch to thee. My heart Restore its, its borrowed rain That in the sunshine's place its day May brighter fair be Oh joy that seekest me through I cannot close my heart to thee. I trace the rainbow through the rain and feel the promise no is not vain that morn shall tearless be. O oh, cross that fillest up my head, I dare not ask to fly from thee. I lay dust life glory dead, and from the ground there blossoms red. Life that shall endless be. Oh, oh love, that will not let me go. Amen. We'll just um, share the screen and um, do a recap of what we studied yesterday. Um. Yeah, uh, yesterday we started. Those who are those who disobey um, God's law, if they were allowed in heaven. It would sin would rear its ugly head again. 
but we are told that sin will never enter heaven again. So we've got to have the character of Christ to go to heaven. All who break God's commandments uphold in Satan's claims that it is impossible to keep God's law. God doesn't tell us to keep any to do anything that, that we cannot do. We can do everything we can do through uh, Christ Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and um, and uh, they say that the case, the cause of God's law is not under that that, that we that that. The curse of God's law, curse of God's law, no, not under us now. We are saved by grace. They are upholding the laws of Satan when they say that um, we, we can't keep the law. Yeah, there are no, 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 this says no boundaries now. The things that are coming out now, people are, are doing abominations in front of God. You know, that all the abominations that's happening. If we want to enter into God's city, we have to keep the commandments. He says, Blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and enter into God's heaven. Those who keep the commandments of God are looked on as legalists. We need to have love for one another. And there was, there was a question asked about Mother's Day, Father's Day, uh, birthdays, Valentine's day. day, and every day they want to celebrate in the church. Um, the Sabbath, you know, it says, the Sabbath will be lightly regarded as we come to the close of this world. Well, when we received, when we went to the church, we were children. There, there was no, there was no chatting in the sanctuary after the, the, the divine service. You know, sometimes, and it, and it's not chatting, chatting about the word of God. It's chatting about what went on in the week and stuff like that. You know, it's um, it's irreverent. Um. So that's you know, and um, this is coming <coughs> to the church. Uh, and then we was talking about the gappy feast as well. Uh, like you, the have a, it's a, they make a cross on the, on the floor, with candles and um, and it's all dark. And we, you know, wondering where this this came from, you know. Um, somebody we, they had one at our church in one of the rooms, and um, the youth did, and uh, somebody <laughs> said it, it felt they, they went in and felt like a seance, you know, it wasn't good. You know, so that that had to be dealt with, you know. Um, Ecclesiastes 9 verse 5 says, and living, mm. know that they will die, but the dead know not anything. Um, in Matthew 15 verse 9, in vain did you worship me, keeping the commandments of men. I think people bring these in. They don't know. They don't. They don't read upon don't, it. They don't read upon it. I think it's a good suggestion. They've seen it somewhere. They don't read upon it, and they bring it into the church. Mm. And uh, and then if somebody does study it, see where it all came from, it they find it's not good. Mm. Is that it? Is that it? No, I've just got a bit more to do. Um, mm. Ellen White, Ellen, Ellen White in 1895 uh, wrote a letter about this creeping compromise into the church. The Sabbath is a day of worship to God, not a day of what, of, of, um, about what man wants to do, you know. And, uh, and then there was a, 
where birthdays came from, you know. Birthday, um, Genesis 40, verse 20. Pharaoh celebrated his birthday. And then in Matthew 14, 6, Herod's birthday, we know what happened then. John the Baptist had his head removed. Well, they both ended up in death, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So many are ignorant of these things coming into the church. You know, if you want to bring something into the church, you need to, you need to um, study about where it came from. Do you know. the research first. <laughs> and we must patiently pray and teach teach, teach him in love. Mm. And um, we were saying that Jesus, um, uh, we, we don't know when Jesus, we know it was roughly October that time, because we know it wasn't December because the shepherds were still out in the, on, in the, on fields, the, in the yeah. fields that not be too cold in December. And um, he was six months younger than John the Baptist, and he was, John the Baptist was born in the spring. So, um, you know, if, we, if, we, if Jesus wanted us to celebrate his birthday, it would have been made known to us. Uh, but we see where, where they celebrate his birth, don't What is it, Tammuz's Day, the <laughs> 25th of December. Yeah. Um, Sun God. You know, they put, uh, they just they make these, they put, bring these relics into the church. And, uh, and I don't know how they get it. I mean, Easter is, is early this year, isn't it? It's in mm -hmm. March, and usually it's in April. I mean... So because it's leap year. Yeah, no, it's, it's leap year, but why different days? It's just man's traditions. And mm, traditions, yeah. And you can see through these traditions, but people have, have their eyes blinded. Yeah. Any thoughts, anyone? Any more thoughts they want to add? I think we did one paragraph yesterday. <laughs> yeah, we did. We did well. <laughs> Okay, let's continue for the next uh... The rabbis counted their righteousness right. as, as a passport to heaven, but Jesus declared it to be insufficient and unworthy. He took external ceremonies and theatrical, uh, theatrical knowledge of theatrical. truth. No. Theoretical, that's it. Yeah, theoretical. theoretical knowledge of truth consists pharisaical righteousness. Constitutes the pharisaical righteousness. The rabbis claimed to be holy through their own efforts in keeping the law. Their works had divorced the righteousness from religion. While they were particularly in ritual observance, their lives were immoral and debase. Their so-called righteousness could never enter the kingdom of heaven. The greatest deception of, hu of the human mind in Christ's day was that a mere assent to the truth constitutes righteousness. In all human experience, a theoretical knowledge of the truth has been proved to be insufficient for the saving of the soul. It does not bring forth the fruits of righteousness. A jealous regard for what is termed theological truth often accompanies a hatred for genuine truth as made manifest in the life. The dark chapters of history are burdened with the records of crimes committed by bigoted ritualists, religionists. The Pharisees claim to be the children of Abraham and boast of, of their possession to the oracles of God. Yet these advantages did not preserve them from selfish, malignant greed for gain and the basest hypocrisy. They thought themselves to be, they thought themselves the greatest religionists of the world, but their so-called orthodoxy led them to crucify the Lord of glory. Orthodoxy led them to crucify the Lord of glory. Well, this is sad, isn't it? Well, the self-righteousness of the rabbis. Mm. Thought, you know, they, 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 they thought they could work their way into heaven by keeping their own laws, by keeping their law. Um, but they missed... But the, the, but the lives were not, um, not according to God's will, you know, there was... Um, 
making merchants on the on the sacrifices, weren't they? Yeah. Somebody would bring a lamb and eat this. Oh, it's not good enough. It's got a blemish. You've got to buy one of ours. Yeah. And, and then you had to change your temper. They, they, change your, do the money changing and mm. buy their shekels or whatever it was to buy Temper the shekels. Yeah. You know, there's a, a lot of corruption. We see that in the, in um, some of the churches today. It's, there's corruption. They're so rich. We've got loads of, loads of, um, especially the, you know, one church in, in Rome. So yeah. much so much wealth and it's, it's been gained through corruption and uh, and then it's so sad that they said they, 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 what they were waiting for they missed they, they missed the messiah you know they led them to cruise and then they crucified him they did they, they didn't accept him because he didn't come in what they should they thought he should be you know it, it, his life condemned their life um and you know his righteousness condemned their unrighteousness and so they decided to put him out of the way so their conscience just wouldn't be pricked and they used the Romans to do it they wouldn't do their own dirty work they used somebody else to do it you find that some people will get somebody else to do the dirty work for them uh, isn't good and we got any thoughts I quite like those two paragraphs Uh, that's interesting. This is a jealous regard for what is termed theological truth often accompanies a hatred of genuine truth as made as mani made manifest in the life. Well we know that um when sun when Sunday becomes law, when Sunday keeping becomes law, they're gonna hate the Sabbath. We know that will happen. And um they're gonna hate Sabbath keepers. And it's this is what's it's talking about here. You know, often makes me hate the what is true. I see we've got some hands. Uh, Sister Kezia, please. Thank you. Hey, good morning, uh, everyone on the platform. Thank you, Tra Tragley Sisters. Yeah, you know, it's um, it's amazing that um, these Pharisees, if you just think about the crucifix, they were so anxious to uh, go to uh, to do the the rituals, uh, the Passover. But at the same time, uh, they were committing murder. Even in the judgment hall, they did not want to come in in case they defiled themselves for for the Passover. So it became such a a meaningless. Um, a thing so the worst thing which we can do is being like the pharisees uh, claiming that we keep all the uh, ten commandments when our hearts are, are so far away from god when we are defiled in so many ways you find you know people are uh, not they don't talk to this one uh in the church they don't um you know we hate each other we categorize each other um, these ones are the present truth. These ones are the liberals. And these ones are, uh, you know, we, we put certain classes in, within ourselves. There is no unity. There is no love between believers. And yet, when we look at it, the times which we are living in, this is the time where we have to be united whether in families, whether in in church, a church family, so that the Holy Spirit may, may be poured upon us. As long as there's that discord within us, we are no different from these Pharisees who, who outwardly uh, looked righteous, you know, white sepulchre, and yet they were so defiled they were full of hate. They would watch to say, what is the Savior going to say uh, so that they can catch him? Or, you know, everything about what was going on was all because the, their hearts, they had not submitted to God at all. 
and they did not even believe that this was the son of God. So it is with us. We have to be careful, especially when we have so much truth with us. The truth can either save us or the truth can, um, can make us even hate those who are following the truth as, as uh, desire of, uh, the pen of inspiration is saying here. Because we ourselves, if we don't practice the truth, we will hate those who who practice the truth. As you rightly say that, um, I think it's uh, in great controversy that the former Sabbath keepers will be the ones who will be betraying us. They will be the haters of, uh, of Sabbath keepers. Yet they themselves used to be, uh, you know, Sabbath keepers. Yeah, thank you very much. Yes, thank you for those thoughts. It's sad that, uh, yeah, the ones in, in the, you know, ones who used to keep the Sabbath will be turned against those who are keeping the Sabbath. Yeah, that is, yeah, it's true that those who, those who don't want to keep the truth will hate those who do. Mm. Um, it, it's a sad state of affairs, isn't it? Mm. Thank you for those thoughts, Sister Kezia. Uh, Sister Dorothy, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Alin and Linda. I'm just going to continue a little bit from where Sister Kezia uh, touched. It is um, for us today to ask ourselves, am I a Pharisee? Do I have a Pharisee, Pharisee spirit? I don't know how to say it, Pharisaic or whatever uh, English is suitable for that. What kind of a spirit is in me when I am among God's people? Sister Kezia mentioned that those who are present to us, they are going to find themselves marginalized. They're going to be told, oh, you think you are holier than us? You think you are better than us? You know, Satan knows how to uh, inspire people to use that word, to scare people from doing the right thing. I don't want them to think that I'm better than them. No, you are not thinking that you are better than anyone. You're just doing the right thing. You just believe the sanctuary message. You just believe in our message, the three angels' messages, and you are doing just that. And because the leaders are not encouraging people to go and do the work, when you do this, they, uh, you kind of you get the look. You feel like you're being spied on. <laughs> You know, there is nothing, the Bible says there is nothing new under the sun. You feel as though you are being watched when you come in and you've got your books or you've got your uh, few people you are going out with. You find that you are, it's like you're being followed. And Satan knows this. Satan knows when you pay attention to that, you're going to feel like, oh, I'm going to be left out. I'm not going to be asked to do anything in church because I'm going, um, you know, we are not all doing it all together. We are not to worry about that. Our prayer is to pray to God that they will have no rest until they have come and joined us so that we can do the work. Because I'm sure most of you, when you go to do the work, you don't go thinking or saying to them, Oh, you people, you are not doing the work. I am the only one doing it. We, I don't believe any of, of us is doing that. But that, even no matter how humble you are, you they're not going to leave you alone. You're going to get the, the, uh, the eye that is kind of spiteful. You're going to feel like you're on your own. But it doesn't matter as long as you're doing the right thing. I am looking at the sentence here, which says the Pharisees claimed to be children of Abraham and boasted of their possession of the oracles of God. Yet these advantages did not preserve them from selfishness, malignity, greed for gain, and the, uh, the, the basest hypocrisy. So knowing the truth, we know we advantage that we have the truth. And we can say that because it is true. We are a remnant, biblical remnant. 
the Seventh Day Adventist Church is the only denomination that can prove its existence based on the Bible, backed by the Bible, the remnant that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. So we know this. Do we have pride in ourselves like these Pharisees did, that they are children, uh, Abraham's children, and therefore they shut their conscience to the truth which Christ brought to them to save them because of this religious uh, pride that permeated in their hearts so deeply that they were close to the truth, which they should have known anyway because the prophecies about Jesus Christ was written in the very book, books that they were reading, yet without understanding. And they ended up rejecting the Savior because of pride and lack of humility and lack of uh, spiritual eyes to discern that Christ was truly the sent one. So all this hypocrisy that we have in our churches today, there is nothing new under the sun. Many people, many leaders are leading God's people uh, to, uh, you know, to perdition because we are ignorant in our churches of present truth, Christ's important work in the most place, in the holy place in the sanctuary. So I'm just encouraging us that not to worry when we are being marginalized wherever you are, even if you are just the only one in your church, don't be afraid of doing the right thing because of what people might say. We pray that God will give us strength and that God will also open the eyes that they may come and join. When God sends us a revival, we are told that we are going to be surprised. Some people, we never thought that they could be doing the work. They will arise and, and preach the gospel. So we are to be humble where we are. Thank you. Yes, thank you for those thoughts. If if you are marginalised because of because you uh, believe that you know uh, the present truth or what our, what our Adventist you know our, the Adventist message uh, unadulterated, um, the Lord will find work for you. You know you don't have to worry and fret. Because it's um, uh, you know, uh, it will just find work for us to do. Yeah, it's true that some don't want to do the work, and they don't want anybody else to do the work either. Because mm. it makes them feel guilty because they're not doing anything. Yeah, the church is in a sad state. You know, you, you see it every day. Very, very sad state. Um. We've just got to pray, got to pray and keep faith for ourselves and help others, you know, there's right and a wrong way to help people. And, um, yeah, yeah. Can I just quickly say, Alan and Linda, recently a sister was disfellowshipped from our church. Um, I'm not like supporting her mannerism was right. She was doing present truth distribution of books. But the attitude that we can also have is wrong. You can be doing the right thing, but then come to bring um, division in church. You can bring a bad spirit in it as well. Because you, you and I, we have not been called to force people or to, you know, to you know, to think that we have got power to get the whole church to go and do uh, the work, the three angels' messages. We cannot. So we can only pray and just ask God to speak to them. Because when we also bring that spirit, it leaves a bad taste. It doesn't encourage anyone to join you. It doesn't at all. And I've seen this kind of thing turn very nasty. And now we are divided. People are even divided over things like food. 
one group decided to form their own WhatsApp group about food and all that. I mean, if they don't agree with what you are doing, we go, you go and do it alone. But if they have made plans and you don't agree with it and you bring your suggestion that we should be giving books during Health Expo and they don't want to, then you go to another street and you give out books because they are more than you. So when you stand there and you are, you know, we are beating them with words and all of that, I don't think we are called to do that. I would like to hear what somebody else would like to say about that. I don't believe that we are called to almost want to force people to do what they are not ready to do. Um, I would like to hear someone else's um, thoughts on that. I don't think so. For myself, I don't. I don't uh, verbally confront people what they are not doing because all you're going to do is you're going to find yourselves in a, in a battle which is not winning. It's not a winning battle. Thank you. So it's true. I think you have to lead by example, not by coercion or, or force or um, telling people that they need to be doing it. Um, yeah, you have to lead by example. And, um, uh, you know, uh, Jesus wept over Jerusalem, didn't he? If they, Because they would not. He'd have gathered them like a chicken gathers a hen. Uh, a hen, hen gathers a chicken under a wing, under his wings, but they would not. If anything's forced, it's not of God. It's not God of God. Can't you, can't, you can't force anything. Legislation, they're going to try, well, they're going to use legislation to bring in the Sunday laws in a church and state, and it's not acceptable. You know, you can't you can't use any legislation to, to force people to do anything. It, it's, serving God's a free will. Yeah. You know, it's not, no, no, any other way is not acceptable to God, I don't believe. I believe that's that's true. That you know, it's, you've got it's got to be it's got to be from the heart. Yeah. Mm. Anybody else got any thoughts on Sister Dorothy's question? Um, I just wanted to add to what Sister Dorothy was saying. There, yes, you can't force anyone. I mean, look, this is between you and God. How God has. Um, you know, he allowed, not everybody is sent to do book distribution, no. There, there are many ministries, some are, uh, are sent to do this, some are sent to do this. So, you know, we, we you do, you cannot stand and say, um, everybody should be doing that in the church and so forth, no. Um, people have got different ministries, um, like for instance, um, I know there are some people who would want to who would, who would go out to alleviate, you know, suffering for others, you know, like for instance, to say, okay, let me let me spend the afternoon with your disabled child so that at least you can have some time off. You know, mi ministries are different. You, you, we we cannot all be in the in the distribution ministry. So you don't know what people do. You don't know how God is sending people, his his people around and. So you cannot judge anyone or to say you should be doing this. And we should always remember that this, uh, this um, it's, a, it's a controversy. The devil does not want people to pray. The devil does not want people to know the truth, especially this book, Great Controversy. Uh, when Sister, Wright herself, Sister White herself says, when she was writing this book, she was very feeble. She was surrounded by so many angels. The devil wanted to kill her. And she would, you know, she felt the presence of, of, of the angels surrounding her than any other book when she was writing The Great Controversy. This is why she says she wanted this book to be to be spread out. So it would be a controversy. And and we should not be discouraged. I was, I was, you know, the spirit is, is, is really leading and we want to thank God because he wants to encourage his people. It's only last night I was talking to my sister and she was, 
she was, uh, you know, discouraged by a sister who she thinks she's a friend to say, do you think you are praying by distributing books and whatever, you know, direct attack like that, you know, uh, which, which you, you know, sometimes you get worried. What's wrong? You know, what have I done wrong? There's nothing which you'd have done wrong. It's just a controversy that the devil does not want this book to go out. I was I was told I was told off by the by the uh, elder head elder. Um, yeah, you, you are distributing the quality of your books. You, do you ever look at the quality of the book which you are distributing? I don't believe in in distributing a book which which brings um, uh, division among uh, denominations. We should be coming together. You hear statements like that, but but you pray to say. Um, look, I I will still go, and God will give us the strength to co to continue this work, and not to be discouraged by, uh, you know, the enemy who is coming through our brethren. We should be praying for them to say, oh, if only they can see the light, if only they we can we can you know help each other or by them by praying that you know those people will take the books, whatever. However, they can be helping this great work to go forward rather than to discourage uh, uh, others. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you for those thoughts. Um, it's sad some people just don't like the great controversy. Um, we, but that, when, when, that, when we take it to the food bank, it's one of the books that people you know, People choose. pounce on it. They, they look at the title, they read the back of it and it's gone. Yeah, you know, because we have a, a table full of books that they can choose, and um, that's the most important table at the food bank, and that's the most popular one. That's the spiritual, food. And, and then the children's they'll take a children's um coloring book like Steps to Christ or um uh Christ Object Lessons, we've got those coloring books, and they'll take it for the children, even if they're not religious themselves. And then, and then if the child, you know, they can and, and they might learn something because it's got it's more than pictures, it's, there's um the stories there with it. And you know it might interest them. Was the one person took three children's books, you know, uh, pay, uh, coloring books, um, yesterday. Um, you know these books are they they're there to for people to, you know, and, and then there were many people saved in the kingdom because they they was given a copy of the Great Controversy, and we know that as you said, Ellen White was very very sick when she wrote it. This I think I read somewhere she'd sit up, write a page, and then sleep for another three days because she was so, just hadn't got the energy to do it. You know, so it really, he, he, he tried, tried to kill her. her. He tried to kill her. Uh, she had several strokes. I'm not sure whether it was that time or not, and all kinds of things, uh, you know, uh, things happened to her. But God saw her through. And, he, you know, he was determined that she was going to write this book. And she was as well. And she was as well. And, um, you know, uh, but... Uh, the Lord, the Lord, you know, he gave us strength to do it, complete it. I mean, when they say we should get together, like you said, you know, uh, with the churches and that, and uh, pull together, you can't, you can't pull together with a, with a mother of harlots or the daughters. Mm. Because it's to be just uniting under error. Yeah, you can't unite under error. Mm. Thank you for those thoughts. Uh, prayer retreat ministries next, please. Good morning, sisters. Good morning, okay. everyone. I didn't quite uh, uh, hear uh, Mother Dodd's uh, question, um, but I I hope um, it um, has been addressed. I just wanted to comment on this paragraph here. Um, speaking of the Pharisees uh, and their religion, he says, the darkest chapters of history are burdened with the record of crimes committed by bigoted. And the screen is moving. Yeah, I'm just looking to see where it is. Oh, yes, I've got it now, yes. Yeah. yeah. It says the darkest chapters of history are burdened with the with the record of crimes committed by bigoted religionists. Yeah. 
Um, then he goes on to say the Pharisees claim to be the to be children of Abraham and boasted of their possession of the oracles of God. Yet these advantages did not preserve them from selfishness, malignity, greed, uh, what else? Greed for gain and the basis hypocrisy. Um, See, so they thought themselves the greatest religionists of the world but their so-called orthodoxy um, led them to crucify the Lord of glory. And I was just thinking, reading this, that um, we cannot make ourselves uh, children of God by profession. Um, it doesn't matter how long we 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 stay in the right place. There's certainly advantages, especially looking at us now being born in the Seventh Day Adventist Church. It's it's a privilege, but that does not make us children of God. Um, the many people who have been in church for years, who were born in church for years, uh, but they have never had a relationship with God. Um, and so what we are learning about the Pharisees here, uh, uh, when they claim to be the children of Abraham, I mean, they they were boasting. They, 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 uh, uh, they were very confident, you know, because of the amount of truth that they had. Um, they, they are, they are relig uh, they, 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 uh, religious privileges, the, 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 the privileges that they had religiously. But um, it's amazing to see that um, it's one thing to have a name, and it's another thing actually um, to really belong to God. And... Uh, the, the, one of the texts that was coming to my mind was this, uh, uh, Matthew 5, verse 8, Blessed are the pure in heart, um, for they shall see God. And another text that came to my mind, and I was, I was reflecting on this, that uh, is John 1, verse 12, where the text says, um, uh, but as many received him, he gave them power um, uh, to be called the sons and daughters of God, something along those lines. That the day Jesus has to be received in the heart before somebody uh, can be called a son or a daughter of God. Uh, and, and these things have to happen, uh, whether you are born in church or what your uh, privileges have been, unless Jesus is received in the heart. I was just thinking this, that um, it's going to be sad, I believe, that uh, many people who have never uh, been in the world, many people who have spent their lives in ministry, they'll come to Jesus that day and say, Lord, did we not do this in your name? And you say, I've, I never knew you. Depart from me. Um, which is a difficult thing to think about because it's, it's quite a, a harsh response from Jesus to say, I've never but you're telling me these people have been in the church all their lives, they never tasted alcohol, never uh, inhaled any substance, uh, uh, never been in unfaithful relationships. So, so, I mean, it's 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 a difficult thing to 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 come to terms with, but. It doesn't, it, it, we're not called 
to a religion. We're called to, to a relationship. Uh, G John 17 verse 3 says, This is life eternal, that they might know thee. And I think as individuals, even as a collective, our greatest pursuit, in fact, Jesus says this devotional called that I may know you. I think it needs to be a personal, uh, 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 a personal experience or personal uh, objective that I may know you. We need to examine ourselves that, I mean, do I know Jesus? Does he know me? Because being an Adventist is just a name. Uh, doing things is just, we, is just, it's good. But does he know us? Um, and, and so I was just thinking, uh, sometimes you might think, oh, these Pharisees, in fact, actually Jesus commended some of the things that the Pharisees were doing. He says, unless your righteousness exceeds or uh, uh, goes past the righteousness of the Pharisees, you shall not, uh, you sh you, you shall not uh, by, you shall by no means enter the kingdom. So, 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 so I'm just saying, uh, this is just a personal reflection, we, which I'm just encouraging all of us to have. Do we, can we say um, that our uh, religion is better than that of the Pharisees? Amen. Yes, thank you for those sobering thoughts. That's what we've got to ask ourselves. Um, it, unless we have a heart conversion, then we're not acceptable to God, no matter what we, whether we was born in the church or, or whether we came in later. Um, God has no grandchildren, it's been said, only children. So you can't get on, you, you can't get, get uh, saved on your parents' coattail. Or, or um, you can't get saved um, because your children go to church. It's got to be a one-to-one a -one relationship with Christ. Thank you. Thank you for those thoughts. Uh, Sister Anuska, please. Good morning. Just to respond to Sister Dorothy's um, question in regards to how we should respond when when people have got their thoughts that one particular way of doing evangelism is superior to another, I would look to remind us how in three different portions of the Bible in Romans in first Corinthians 12 and also in Ephesians we are reminded that there are diversity of gifts but they are all given by the same Spirit, being the Holy Spirit they're not given for our benefit, but they're given for the to enable God's people to do the work which He has called for them to do, whether it's within the church or outside the church. And also in again in first in First Corinthians, we're reminded how we're all parts of the body of Christ. And in that same chapter, chapter 12 of First Corinthians, the hand can't say to the foot, oh, you're not important, because you think about it in terms of like the, the, human, the human body, and the hand can't do what the foot can do, and vice versa. And in conclusion, I would also say that it's not our job to bully people into doing what we think is right ultimately god has given us freedom of choice and we should follow that manner thank you yes thank you for those thoughts it's true i think um in the bible um it may be one of the texts that you quoted uh 
the disciples forbade uh, some people who were preaching Jesus and Jesus told them that they shouldn't have done that. Um, I remember, remember the story. Um, yeah, there was a different gift. We're not all gifted to do um, ev everything the same. There's all there's a, every work in all different works of uh, line of work that we can do to spread the gospel. You know, there's no right and there's no um, uh, one that's better than the other. But it's, you know, you, you, your people different have different gifts, different talents, and so we should all use them to the glory of God. Yeah, it's like um, parts of the body. The hand can't do what the foot can do, mm. but they all work together. They all work together. Yes, thank you for those thoughts. Any more thoughts, anyone? Yeah, just to comment on that, just to add on that as well. Um, uh, I think it's a chapter um, um, uh, in the South Ages. Um, yeah, one of the last chapters, which is entitled to my father. I think it's that one to 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 my to my father and to your father, something along. Oh, by the sea once more. I can't remember which one of those two. But anyway, um, Jesus, uh, Jesus was having a conversation with uh, with Peter. Um, remember that last conversation in John? Is it John? 20 um, where you know Peter repents and uh, is given his, 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 his life work remember he was told to feed the sheep feed the lambs and feed the sheep and then Jesus reveals to him what uh, the manner of death he was going to uh, uh, to have so as Jesus was speaking to Peter, John was following behind. And Peter wanted to know what was going to become of John. Uh, and Jesus rebuked him. He says, what is that to do with you? And, and I'm sure she comments, Sister White, there, and I resonate. Uh, uh, I'm just as... Uh, uh, from what I'm getting at, the question was probably uh, around that. Uh, Sister White comments there that uh, there's, uh, we need to be careful that we are not uh, 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 curious like Peter as to the work that God has assigned others. Um, it's not our part to prescribe what others are supposed to be doing in God's work. That is the Holy Spirit's work. Um, sometimes, yes, you do have this feeling that oh, why is why is that people not doing what I'm doing or why are they not doing exactly the way I'm doing it? Or why don't people uh, 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 do as much um, uh, why don't they put enough effort as I do? Why? You know those those thoughts when you, or you feel that uh, are people doing enough, even when they're doing something different? Now that curiosity is not given us. Um, so basically the counsel she, she gives there that we need to be faithful in our lots, where the Lord has put us. Uh, everybody needs a personal experience with the leading of the Holy Spirit to know what the Holy, Sp uh, what the Holy Spirit wants uh, 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 them to do. Um, so, 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 yes, maybe just to, to say in short that uh, uh, let us be content in the lot that God has given us and let us be faithful and uh, not be not care so much as to what uh, uh, God has given others to do. Yes, thank you for those thoughts. Um, another thing as well, I was thinking that uh, 
they expected Jesus to come back really soon and, and John was the youngest disciple. He was a lot younger than Peter. And so perhaps Peter thought that Jesus would come back in the lifetime of John. You know, so that might have been another quite another reason why he, he said, what's going to become of John? John? Yeah, thank you for those thoughts. Uh, uh, Elder Demiris, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Yeah, um, mine is sort of a, a question on how do we strike the balance with reference to the work that we are supposed to be doing. <clears throat> you will find out that uh, we are to carry this message to the entire universe as a body. And you sort of find it very challenging and difficult to get people uh, involved in the work of God. Um, you try to probably encourage the brethren uh, to say, well, can we go out and give, it could be books, it could be, I think we, we, we see it in many times, where we say, okay, let's go for literature distribution, and you have a handful of people going out and it seems uh, the majority are not interested in it, or I don't know how I can classify it. Now, how do we strike a balance in uh, quantifying whether you are, you are not, how can I put it, whether you are not concerned about how others are contributing to the work of God. Because sometimes it gives, it brings discouragement mm. when you are trying to work as a, a team and you end up going out on your own. And it, it, it kind of uh, gives us some kind of a, of a discouragement, if I may say it that way. How then can we strike a balance between the two that we are not uh, we are not trying to to be concerned really that people are not working, but at the same time you are concerned that people are not going out. How do we strike a balance whereby you you don't end up uh, being uh, trying to know much of somebody why they are not doing God's work. I don't know whether I've put that question clear, but I'm trying to find out how do we strike a balance there. Yeah. That's, that's a good question. Um, you don't, we don't know what people are doing. You know, you're surprised um, when you hear some. You, you're surprised yeah. you hear some testimonies. You, you've, no, you've no idea what they've been doing, and um, you know, because it, it, to you they're looking as though they're doing nothing, but they're doing a lot. And uh, it's, it's yeah, striking a balance. Um, if I'm understanding the question right. Um, that's a good one. <laughs> Thank you for those thoughts. Um, no, we'll have the last speaker, Sister Kezia. Thank you. In trying to just probably answer a elder's question, you know, many are called, but few are chosen. Um, I know we would want everybody to to come out and, you know, especially for, you know, book distribution as a church and, you know, um, I think probably encouragement rather than um, encouragement to say when we come back, maybe we can have um, a testimonies of what, how God has, has, um, has been leading in, in, the, in the book distribution, seeing the hand of God there, 
so that others who are probably discouraged are also encouraged to come and join. But uh, this is all to do with also just praying, really, to say, Lord, um, we 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 just want to go as a as a as a church. Um, the spirit is the one which pushes people to go out and ask um, God to to allow the spirit to move his people. But even if only one or two are moved, that's what God has done. We should be content in that in in that um, that he's only moved one or two people to go and distribute the the books. Although it's not about numbers, that's what we are trying to. What I'm trying to say, it's not about the numbers. It's about um, how the spirit, probably the spirit wants just to use probably three of you in that church. You, we don't know. Therefore, um, we are content with whatever situation the spirit is. Um, the lot which we are happy with, the lot which God has given us, is opposed to thinking that we 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 have to do it all together. Come on, come on, everybody, let's go. It, it's, it's very difficult. I can see where you're coming from, that, you know, it's very difficult to strike a, a balance. But I'm reminded of the parable of, of the talents, you know. Um, it's not the number of talents which people were given, but how best they used that talent for the glory of God. Therefore, um, the, the people, they, they might have, you know, another way, another talent, which they are using to the best of their ability, and God recognizes that. Thank you. Yes, it's the talents, uh, you know, you have to use them for the glory of God, and... Um... Uh, some people perhaps want to do it, but they're so timid they don't. They can't. They just can't approach people, you know. And perhaps they could go in twos then, and one be giving the books out, and the other one just be with them to see to encourage them, you know. Because some people perhaps want to do it, but they're not. Um, they're just just too timid to be able to do it, you know. They need encouragement, and rather than get be frightened and not be able to do it, they don't do it at all, you know. So perhaps people need a little bit of um help, trade, you know. Um, so it, we're told to go in twos anyway, you know. So one could, the one who's good at it can give the books out, and the one can learn from them, and they might be they might be co uh, coaxed into doing it themselves. Mm. All right, I see another hand, Sister Dorcas. We'll have this as the last um, comment. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Dudley Twins, uh, and good morning, everyone. I just want to. Ask Sister Dorothy, I might he if not heard her properly. Uh, did you mean that he, the this uh, person wanted to distribute books at the Health Explore uh, platform, but uh, she was not allowed to distribute books there, or she is the one who was forcing people to distribute books at that uh, a platform? What came into my mind is that uh, maybe she was thinking that while they are doing this healthy explore or thing, they must uh, also distribute books and she wanted to distribute books there. And uh, she was forcing people to go and distribute or she alone, she went and distribute books and she was also or censured for, censured for that. I, I, uh, do you mind if we don't, Sister Docas, uh, thank you for that, but do you mind if we don't, uh, like sort of, um, uh, talk that right now because the time is up and at the same time, we don't want to be bringing an individual to discuss in details of issues that have happened in the church. I think it's unfair because the person is not here to speak for themselves, if that's okay. I understand. Thank you. Oh, our time's finished now. Thank you for yeah. all the comments. Part 16, part 17 tomorrow. <laughs> um, 
Yes, thank you for all the comments. We've certainly been blessed and there's a lot to think about. And um, uh, Elder Demir, is are you able to pray to close for us, please? Shall we pray? <clears throat> Father in heaven, we thank you so much for your grace, which is sufficient to save sinners like us. We thank you, Lord, for calling us to this highest office of serving and working in your field. And we thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit who continues to minister amongst us. We thank you, Lord, for the uh, discussions that we had and all the answers that have been given to help each one of us in our, in our areas of work as we work for you. How I pray that, Lord, as we dismiss this morning, the Holy Spirit will continue to abide with us. Protect us from the enemy. We know, Lord, the enemy has already put some uh, plans and schemes against us. But we thank you for the Holy Spirit that he who is in us is greater than he who is in the world. Thank you so much, O oh God, for your for hearing our prayer. Till we meet again in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you amen. for the prayer and thank you everyone that's joined and for the the, the comments that we've had this morning. At uh, 10 o'clock it will be the gems, it's the music and the photography lesson. We like them to take pictures of nature so they can share the screens. And then at 12, 12 o'clock at midday prayer, 6.30 it will be song service, followed by another message from Elder, uh, from Brother Tabuda Ziambi. So that's the lineup of today's programmes. Have a nice day and see you all later by God's grace. Amen. Amen.